Hi, I'm Natasha and I'm the flower horticulturist here at Bessie Seeds. We get a lot of questions about uh, window boxes and planters and uh, I'm going to plant up a window box here and show you how it's done and give you some tips and pointers. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a window box for an eastern exposure so it's going to be uh, a good amount of shade. Uh, I know that that's a big, a big question that a lot of people have. It's a difficult to find plants for shade. So, this is a sterile potting mix uh, and you can just buy it uh, by the bag. Um, if you have planters from the previous season, you can always reuse your soil. Just make sure to mix it in with new, new sterile stuff. Uh, and what I do to prep it is I add a couple of amendments. One of the products I use to uh, help retain moisture in the planters and window boxes is called Soil Moist. Uh, and it comes with 40 individual packets of a, po a polymer granule that looks like sea salt. And basically what happens is when you add moisture to this, it expands uh, almost 100 times its size, or maybe like 30 or 40 times its size, giving you these kind of pebble-sized uh, jelly blobs that are really great for maintaining and retaining moisture within the soil, even when the soil has completely dried out. Uh, so basically, I have scissors here, but I just ripped up the plastic. <laughs> um, uh, it's, there, they, there's a table on here it, that shows you the size of your planter, and uh, how many little packets you're going to need. Um, and I know that I'll probably use about a dozen or so in this window box. And then, and this is the first thing to add when you come to amendments. I also have the, um, the Smart Coat, which is a granular fertilizer that I put in, but uh, it only needs to go in the first inch or two inches of soil, while, while the polymers, polymer can go in about four to six inches down. You can really mix it up. So you, you just take it and you sprinkle it and it is, it is time consuming when you have a whole bunch of little packets and really big planters, but that's part of the, the, the zen process of gardening. Get, I use my hands, you can use a trowel, and you just literally kind of turn over the soil and work it in. And you'll notice that this is nice, light, fluffy soil, and as I turn it over you can see it's a, it's a darker color, so it's got a good little, it's got a good amount of moisture in it, which is, which is great before starting. Uh, okay, so I have the, the um, soil moist in here and I've mixed it all in the whole pot. And then I've got my Smart Coat uh, time release fertilizer. It's a granular fertilizer and it's actually called hanging basket food but it can be used for anything. It'll last up to six months in your planter and it's 14, 14, 14. So it isn't too, too strong which will, which will allow me to uh, use a liquid fertilizer on a regular basis through the summer as well to really maximize blooms and, uh, and growth. I know that about a bottle of this will do one of these whole, whole planters. So I'll do that, and then I, then this is just kind of a loose, a loose mix in the top. You don't want to put it down too too far. This is more it it, it needs to hit the wa like water. Uh, every time you water is going to help it. So and right around the top. So now I've got my soil already on this side of the window box, and I've got my plants here. Uh, again, it's for an eastern exposure, so I've chosen plants that are really great for the shade. Uh, I've got over here. I've got some non-stop red begonias which is tuberous begonia, and these I've set out in peat moss and they're ready to go. They've been sitting out for about three weeks. Okay, so you can see it has uh, some, some growth started, some new little leaves that have just started to come out, and it's taken them about three weeks to actually start coming, so it does take a while for begonias to get going. Uh, I'll flip it over, you can see that there is some nice new uh, root growth starting, uh, and so I'm going to take them straight out of the tray that I've got here, uh, and I'm going to s set them in first because I know exactly where these are going to go. Uh, these are more the backdrop in the center of the window boxes, uh, and everything else that I've got are going to be around the edges, like vines and some filler flower. So I, I'm just going to space, I'm going to just lightly set them in, not too, too deep, they only need to be down a couple inches. And I'll pick out the best ones in the tray that have the growth. So normally I'll put, I'll put three on either side. So I've got three here, and again, I just, because this soil is really nice and loose, it's great. I just, you know, it's really easy to kind of wiggle them in. Uh, and so I, I don't cover them up completely so I know exactly where they are when it comes for me to plant other things around them. So I have the begonias in. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to plant uh, are vines. I've got, um, this is a great new vine in the market. It's called Goldfinger, and uh, it's, a, it's a potato vine. So Goldfinger is a combination of marguerite uh, with the lime, beautiful lime color, 
and blackie, which is a potato vine that uh, you, you know well for its distinctive black color. So the two combine really nicely. Uh, it's also quite a vigorous vine, uh, trailer, uh, so you don't have to plant them too close together. Sometimes it's easy to overcrowd a window box or a planter when you're starting with very young plants. Uh, if you can check the tags, make sure you know what sizes they are, what sizes they get to, because they will eventually crowd each other out, and a lot of times what will happen is you'll have two or, two or three out of five or more plants that will dominate and you don't even see the other ones or they, they die out. So I'm going to take these plugs and just put a, place a few out. I always like to place things out before I, I commit to planting them. That way I get a better idea of, of balance and, and, and how it's going to look in the end. So what I planned on doing is setting these out, but I've also got another vine to mix in between, um, which is completely different in color and uh, texture. I've got a plant called Wandering Jew. Uh, it's very common as a house plant, and if you actually have an apartment or a home where you don't get a lot of light, it is a really nice plant to have just as a house plant because they, they don't really need a heck of a whole lot of light. So while I'm doing this, I might as well just do the one in front of it as well. show you really how fast it can be done. All right, so take some begonias. I'll set them out. Ooh, there's a nice one. So set them like that and I'll wiggle them in a little bit. I'll grab my vines. And because I'd like them all to look the same, I'll place the plants in roughly the same position. And these are going to have a couple weeks in the greenhouse before they're put outside, so they will fill out a little bit, which is nice. Now I do have one more plant that I'm going to stick in, and it's, it's one that I think is underused uh, in the landscape, especially well in planters. It's called Turinia. Uh, and Turinia is a, mound, it's a mounding plant. It's a bit of a trailer. It'll get to be about 8 to 10 inches across, and I would say 8 inches tall. Um, the flowers look very, very similar to a snapdragon, uh, and the flowers on these are going to be nice and like a, a nice uh, blue purple. So, all the plants are in. Everybody's ready. I'll, I'll do a little firming around the edges. Another good thing to do is to make sure after you've planted up your window box, oh, that out, is to make sure that your soil is about an inch uh, below the actual lip of the container, the box. That way when you water, um, the water is going to stay in the top and uh, be absorbed into the soil and not just run right off the edges of, of the planter. Because I've had that happen plenty of times. So you just take your hand and you kind of really quickly press it down around the edges. It's time to water. Once everything's planted and you've got all your amendments in your soil and your plant situated, I'll hold it high up so it's more of a gentle rainfall than it is really intense stream of water. So you want to make sure you have holes drilled in the bottom if they don't already come and uh, that way you'll have great drainage because what can happen is there can be a lot of root rot. Uh, a great tip if you live somewhere, if you have a really, really rainy season like we did last year here in Prince Edward Island, um, is to move your planters somewhere out of the direct rain uh, or tip them to their sides so that if the water buildup is quite high uh, it, it's going to drain out uh, and so that's how you do planters um, good luck and, and uh, enjoy <laughs>